For today's lesson, we're looking at the domain of a function. Uh, we've already talked about this if we've been given a graph, but we are looking at this symbolically this time. So it's important when we look at a function, um, just the equation, like looking at something like this, that we can even decide what are the possible inputs for the function. So what's the domain just based off of what's been given to us? Uh, to remind ourselves what the domain is, we have the set of x coordinates in a relation. That's our input, our um, independent variable. Sometimes it's going to be written explicitly. So here we see an example, f of x equals x squared. This is an explicit domain. It's a restriction to the actual domain. So when we think about the function x squared, y equals x squared, that's a quadratic function. It looks something like this. There's our parent function. It has a domain of uh, all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, because it keeps going forever left and right. Um, but if we restrict it, so if we apply that domain restriction, so but with our domain restriction, we're only looking at the x values from 0 to 5. So our x values 0 to 5 give us an output 0, 0 all the way up to what we would see would be 525 if we plug that point in there. So it's only going to be part of the actual parabola. So if we saw it written like this, we talked about this was our algebraic notation. In interval notation, we had bracket 0, comma 5. We're going to be focused mainly on domain but to remind ourselves about range, that's our y-coordinates, or the output of a function. It's a little bit more difficult to, to determine what the output of the function is going to be. But with our parent function, if we know the general shape, that helps give us an idea. In our case, we know something that's just going to continue going up. It's an increasing function that way in this part. So if I was only from 0 to 5, we could plug in and get an idea of what the input and output is. But our initial output is 0 all the way up to 25 on our y-axis up here. So in our case, we go from 0 to 25. But it is a little bit more difficult to determine the range just from the equation. So we would rely on a graph a little bit more or using our parent function and transformation skills. When we focus on the domain of a function, the natural domain of a function is all real numbers. But there are certain restrictions based off of the function type. These important restrictions, you're just kind of going to have to memorize them. But as you think about your parent functions, hopefully they become a little bit easier to memorize. So the first one is this rational function. Any rational function is something that is a division problem. It's got a division function with x in a denominator or your input in the denominator. And so the issue here is that our denominator cannot equal zero because we know that we can't divide by zero. So if we look at this example, we have a function and x minus 2 is in the denominator. So our issue says our denominator cannot equal zero. I don't care what the numerator is, we could have 0 in the numerator, but we cannot have the denominator equal 0, which means x minus 2 cannot equal 0. And we want to find out what values of x would make that true. So if I solve for x, I'd add 2 to both sides and get x cannot equal 2. In that case, if we write that domain out, that would mean any value of x except for 2. So all the way from negative infinity up until 2 would work. So we're going to go 2 with a parenthesis because we're not including 2. And then all the values from 2 to positive infinity. So what we'll see is the only value that's been taken out of that domain is 2. That's why we have our parentheses to say it's excluded. The second restriction is a radical function. Now, radicals were things that were like square roots, but we're specifically looking at radical functions with even indices. 
So to kind of remind ourselves, maybe we'll make a note off to the side here. What does that mean, a radical with an even indice? All right, so radicals with even indices. Indices is just the plural of index, but we'll see something like the square root. So like square root of nine is a radical with an even index. Uh, fourth root of 81, the sixth root of maybe 64, all of those are radicals with an even indice. So when we have a square root symbol, a radical, this value here in the little crease of the square root is our index. A square root symbol, like square root of 9, is implied that it's a 2. We normally don't write a 2 in that little crease there, but that is your index. So if it's even, we cannot have a negative inside the radical. So when index is even, we can't have a negative inside the radical. So think about if you took the square root of negative 9, it's going to come up as a non-real answer. And we'll talk about what imaginary numbers mean in a later lesson. But for now, it doesn't give us a real solution. So we cannot do the square root of a negative value or the fourth root of a negative value. We can do the cube root or the fifth root. So when we thought about, uh, let's just put this back here, a cube root function, if you remember what the shape of the graph looks like, it looked something like this. So it did have a domain of all real numbers. So most all odd root functions or odd indexed radical functions would have a graph that looks something like this. So the, that domain doesn't have a restriction, but an even index would have a restriction. So what we're looking at here, we got example one, this g of x function has a radical. I'm just gonna rewrite it here so I have room. But the part inside the radical is what's causing our restriction because we know the inside of the radical, so inside the radical, will have to be greater than or equal to zero because it cannot be negative. It can be zero, it could be a positive value, but whatever goes inside has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we're just gonna set that x plus five greater than or equal to zero and solve for x. If I do that, I'd subtract five from both sides, so x is greater than or equal to negative five. And then we just turn that into our domain as interval notation. So I'm just going to take this, try to make it bold. But our domain would be all the values of x greater than or equal to five, negative 5. If you want to turn that into a number line to help you, you can. You'd find your negative 5. And we talked about the equal to makes it a solid circle. And all the values greater would be to the right. So we're going to say bracket negative 5 all the way to infinity with a parenthesis. So at this point, let's stop there and you go ahead and try these two examples down here at the bottom, these you try. You want to describe the domain restriction and then write the domain in interval notation. So just like I've done here, you can describe the problem in the domain and then find out what the actual domain and in interval notation is. So you can pause the video and then put, press play when you're ready. If you went ahead and tried this, in this problem, here's our denominator. So the denominator cannot equal zero. That means 2x plus 8 cannot equal zero. And I'd solve for x, and I get negative 4. 
So x cannot be negative 4, which means our domain will be negative infinity to negative 4, parentheses, union, negative 4 to positive infinity. That's the only excluded value. For the second question, you should have said something about the inside of the radical must be greater than or equal to 0. In that case, 5x minus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. So then 5x is greater than or equal to 9. If I divide by 5, I get 9 fifths. And it's easier just to leave it as a fraction right now. That means our domain should be bracket 9 fifths to infinity. All right, so let's go back to where we were. And in this example two, we see that this function has combined the other two that we saw earlier. So we're looking at how do we approach a function that has combined or more than one domain restriction. And this is okay, we have two issues. Here, x minus two is in the denominator. We know a denominator cannot equal zero. And then we have a square root. A square root is an even index radical. So we can't square root a negative, which just means that the inside of the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we want to combine those two issues. So if I look at them separately, the first one was that our denominator cannot equal zero. So x minus two cannot equal zero. That means that x, if I solve it, cannot equal positive two. Our other issue was that the radical, inside of the radical, has to be greater than or equal to zero. So inside the radical is greater than or equal to zero. Inside the radical is x plus five. So x plus five must be greater than or equal to zero. If I subtract five, I get x is greater than or equal to negative five. So we wanna combine both of these. So if I take this issue and this one, I'm just gonna say thus, we get a number line system that will look like, we know it can't be two, so that'd be an open circle there. And then negative five is greater than or equal to. So I can put a solid circle at negative five, but we're shading to the right. And once I get to two, I know it can't be two, so I'm just gonna jump over it and keep shading. We turn that into our domain interval notation. I would say bracket negative five all the way to two, parentheses, union two to infinity. So the two is excluded. We'll see that taken out of the domain, but we started at negative five and went to infinity. So we just combined both of those domain restrictions. Our last one here is another kind of combination, but it's a radical function with even index, that domain restriction we saw earlier, but now it's in the denominator. And so when we combine those two things, we see that the inside of a radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. We know that part. That's what we just talked about. Plus, now we also have it in the denominator. So if it's in the denominator, it can't equal zero. If you combine those two things, this means that our x minus three has to be greater than zero. It can't be equal to anymore. So we would have set it equal to greater than or equal to zero, but now I can't equal zero. So it's just strictly greater than zero. So let's solve that out. If x minus three is greater than zero, then x is greater than positive three. We turn that into our domain interval notation to be parentheses three all the way to infinity. 
All right. So there's a few questions here for you to practice. Uh, we'll go over them in a second video.